I'm Los Angeles, shall. California. This is the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name is Kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who's farted so forcefully that his pants and underwear flew right off of his body, and now he's rubbing his boner like a scratch-off lottery ticket. That's Jeff Clark. What's up, Puminati? What's up, fellas? And transmitting to us from a broken-down dildo factory... The bearded, booger-eating, goatsy king known as Shuddy Boy. You. Man, just about a, a week, Shuddy. Week until the premiere. For most of the people listening to this, it's a week before you get out here. My fucking, my grandma arrives on Saturday because of a um. miscommunication. So I now have to entertain her for a few extra days before the rest of the family yeah. arrives. Yeah, but it's I, Nana. She's she's easygoing. She'll she is easygoing. You're gonna have fun. When's the last time that you spent a significant amount of time with Nana just by yourself? Uh, last month. Oh, the family. We were in Florida. Everybody wanted to go to the beach. The two of us hate the beach, so we stayed behind and ate cream of wheat and watched. Old episodes of Price is Right on Pluto TV. So we basically just emulated what life was like when I was five. Listen, you've got two days of that ahead of you. What do you mean? Oh, just eating fucking cream of wheat with my grandma? And watching Price is Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I made us a reservation at a nice restaurant, take her out to dinner. Because, I mean, Carl's going to be around the whole time, too. So we're thinking we'll take her to a movie. That reminds me. I don't even know what opens next weekend. Are you taking her to Barton G, or is that an everybody dinner? I still don't know. I don't even know if Barton G is a realistic uh, goal. So basically, my sister and my brother-in-law... No sense in making any plans with them. They fly in at midnight on Tuesday. So, essentially Wednesday night. The premiere is Wednesday, and then they fly home Thursday morning. So, there's... I made reservations for a big dinner in Glendale right before the premiere. Like, uh, two blocks from the theater. And then, I might have to, depending on how long the dinner goes, just bounce and leave everybody behind and walk over there by myself because I do kind of have to get there around the time that our rental time starts well you won't have to do that by yourself you will have PA shuddy with you nice all right let's see I want to see what the options are of movies coming out this weekend I could take her to see challengers she can watch uh, Zendaya make out with two dudes uh, from what actually, I have heard about that movie, it's yes, not it. as awkward as I know. I heard that too. you would think. Yeah, they, uh, the bait and switch in the trailer. Because Michaela went to see it this weekend by herself because she thought it was going to be too hard to watch it with anyone else. Hmm. But uh, like adults it in the family, it wasn't. It wasn't that uncomfortable watch. Like when I saw Wolf of Wall Street with my mom and sister and. He, Leo blows cocaine up a hip stripper's asshole with a straw. Or Bruno. Didn't you see that with your mom and sister? And my grandpa. <laughs> my elderly conservative grandpa who, when the penis started flapping around, they did like a stop motion thing with a flaccid penis, and then the pee hole went, Bruno! He was like, that's it. And he got up and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what you were getting yourself into before you went and saw Bruno at them. I mean, 
I sort of did and he sort of have. didn't. He should have. Sort of. I 100% sort of. should have. Oh, there we go. There's the winner. The fall guy. No brainer. Ryan Reynolds, or uh, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling and um, Emily Blunt. PG-13. Fun Ryan, She'll love it. Fun Ryan Gosling uh, anecdote. We were watching round one of the NFL draft on Thursday. And when Jared Goff came out, <laughs> David was very confused why Ryan Gosling was there. Oh, I thought there was about to be like some sort of jerk off joke made. No, no. Jared Goff looks like a poor man, Ryan Gosling. Ah. Uh-huh. Man, life must be good. Yeah, I mean, who isn't Ryan Gosling with, uh, isn't he with Eva Mendes? Yeah. I think, I don't think actually, Jared Goff's girl is hotter, actually. What? Yeah. Hold Please, on, hold. Send it. Who the fuck is I got it. Eva Mendes? I'm on it already because it came up when I. All right, show you Was it Christine Harper or here. something? Wow. Yeah, he uh, he definitely did well for himself. I don't know. I, I think I still give the edge Kristen to Kristen Harper. Eva Mendez. Dude. She's gorgeous. Come on. Are you going off of like talent and like all that, like her charisma on screen? No, I'm just going off through of... Chris, if you go through Kristen Harper's Instagram, there are, there's like 30 chicks that are hotter than her. Like Jeff, didn't didn't you learn your lesson with Instagram? No. I mean, all right, that's an easy winner. All right, cool. So tickets to go see Fall Guy, a nice dinner. Um, maybe, I don't know. She is very easygoing. She is happy just fucking sitting down and watching The Price is Right. She'll probably want to clean my apartment. She's like, my grandma years ago was told by the doctor because she... She never just sits and relaxes. She's always like standing up with a roll of paper towels and a fucking spray bottle of Windex in her hand. And <laughs> the doctor took her iPhone. That's not a good woman. And went into the alarm settings and set a daily alarm at 5 p.m. And he was like, when this alarm goes off, I order you to make yourself a cocktail, sit down on the couch, and drink it. Like, you have to... Relax. You're in your 80s. Just fucking take it easy. 80 for Brady. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and then after that, it's just going to be, I made a document in my phone of all the times that I have to go to LAX because nobody could just fly in at the same day and same time. So, let me see. If. Excuse me. I did try to ask when a convenient time to fly out would be, and I, Jeff witnessed it. I got a basically whenever is fine. Once again, Shuddy Boy thinking everything's about him. All right, so here's the, <laughs> here's the document. I have to make a trip to LAX on May 4th, May 6th, twice on May 7th, May 9th, May 10th, and May 12th. Seven, seven trips to LAX within a week. That sounds like fucking hell. And a movie premiere. I uh, I completely intend on going with you, so you don't have to go pick up Joy and Jeff by yourself. Uh, I'm just concerned about. Uh, the time and me being used to being three hours ahead. Yeah, you probably won't be. And the I'll rest of my, my family best. will probably be asleep. But if anything, I'll at least be snoring next to you in the car. Oh, that'll be fun. That's helpful. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole Barton G thing. The food honestly isn't stellar. It's just very, very fun. But the portions are also gigantic, and it's a little pricey. And I ate so much the one time that I went there, I almost pooped out of my mouth. And it was really uncomfortable. But I don't think their reservations fill up as 
quickly as one might suspect. So it is still a dangling option. But uh, I've also... Jeff, have you ever gone to... Fuck, let me see. Carl texted it to me because she's trying to help me out with ideas to keep the family busy when there's no movie crap happening. And uh, the the Huntington Library, you ever heard of that? No. It's not a library. It's basically just a gigantic <laughs> botanical garden. This is in Huntington? No, I think it's also in Pasadena. Oh, uh, okay. Because I've heard of... I've heard of the library around Huntington Beach. Are you familiar with that? No. I, I thought... That, Hunting, is, that Hunting, is a strip club. I thought Huntington... Oh, that would make sense, because I thought Huntington Beach burned <laughs> down all their libraries. Yeah, no. No, no, it's a strip club. So this place, this fucking botanical garden, that they, I think they used that as the setting for Eagleton in Parks and Rec when they would go to the nice town. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting, and I am still a little nervous about this whole thing. But like the movie premiere, or the hosting, all of it. N- mostly the movie premiere, right? It's like like filling a theater. Granted, it's not a giant theater, but filling a theater with people, and then showing them a movie that it's like, oh fuck! Hopefully, I'm not about to show them Threat Level Midnight and. I'm going to be looking around and be like, huh? Huh? And everybody's like, yeah, that was good. <laughs> Have you watched the finished film? Oh, yeah. I think I have seen The Second Coming of John Cooper over 80 times now. Well, yeah, I you, I remember you saying that last week, but have you seen it since it's been completely? Yeah. Yeah, because I've been going through and, and trying to help out with pointers and guidance for the new poster. And uh, the trailer. So the trailer is not even going to be done before the premiere. The The trailer and the poster will probably be finished around mid-May. And then that's when we go balls to the wall trying to sell it and promote it and all that stuff. But honestly, the only thing that I ever wanted out of this movie, and some might consider this a high bar, some might consider this a low bar, and it's a film that Carl and I just rewatched recently that we hadn't seen in a very long time. Grandma's Boy. Like, Grandma's Boy did not do well critically at all. I don't think it did well at the box office for the small run that it had. <laughs> I don't think it's... I don't think it won any awards, but... Why, why, why are you trying to be like that, then? Cause it's a, I don't it, really like it that much. Because it's, it's an R-rated comedy that, like... I don't know. Carl and I don't have the exact same sense of humor, like... I definitely go a little bit more lowbrow than she does, but we were scrolling around trying to find a movie and we both on Hulu, we, when we scrolled past grandma's boy, we were both like, Hey, I remember that. And she's like, fuck it, put it on. And we were both just like, I don't know. I, I used to think this movie was funny as fuck back in the day, but does it still hold up? And we both laughed so hard throughout that movie. We both landed on it being a four dicker at the end. And like that's like I want to I, I wanted to make a movie that's like you know probably going to get destroyed by the critics, but it will have an audience of people that like to smoke weed and throw it on. So if it if it lands like that with anybody, that is all I ever wanted. You're not going to you know reach Avatar status when you're making dick and fart and poop jokes. No. Yeah, you're not going to get that James Cameron love. And you're not even a fan of Grandma's Boy, right, Jeff? No, I didn't like it. (laughs) So I'm hoping your movie's better than that. I'm expecting it to be. There's no NFL games taking place in that movie. I just don't fucking get it. Not that I could. Well, you don't have any NFL movie or NFL uh, games taking place in your movie either. But I'm still going to give it a shot. Let's see. It's probably going to be gay, but we'll give it. Hopefully not. Listen, just remember that at least your movie takes place after the invention of the automobile. So, Jeff. That's true. There are cars in it. Yeah, you're not going to lose me that early. All right. (laughs) The bottom floor is two dicks. Nice. Uh, Speaking of Jeff, how did things go with your visit to the dentist? Could have went better, I'll tell you that. 
No, I'm just kidding. It was fine. Um, they kind of confirmed what I knew and what I think was like the least shitty outcome, which is I need to get my wisdom teeth removed. I think I was oh. really hoping it wasn't like. I thought we all you know. agreed that it was most likely um, an infected semen deposit. <laughs> there was an infection there, though. But the guy said that because the my bottom left wisdom tooth is at like a 45 degree angle, and it's like impacting my my other teeth, my regular teeth, I guess, that <laughs> there's a gap in between like in my gums and like shit got in there and got a little affected. So I just oh, need dude. to get in a fucking same thing. Yeah. So that's crazy. I dude. just needed, I just needed to get some antibiotics. Um, and I got, and I got to get my wisdom teeth removed. Um, so I'm going to get all four removed Ow. probably in like the third week of, um, third week of May. I'm going to Ow. visit my mom from May 9th to the 15th. So I don't want to do it then or beforehand. Um, I'm going to do it afterwards. And I'm thinking like the week after I'll do it. And I should be good to go by trying to tell a story. We should fuck up. (laughs) Damn it. Ow. 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 You ask me a question, I'll fucking answer in it. And you're playing all these guys and you're getting bored of the answers. You're sound biting over me. No, I'm spicing it up. I'm giving people a, a visual of you in the in the dentist chair getting your wisdom teeth out. Oh. It better not go like that. They told me they're gonna oh. put me out. Oh. Um, oh, I actually got to do the consultation Thursday with the oral surgeon specifically, but well, I'm probably I mean, gonna be. You're lucky. Put out. You're lucky you didn't have because because when I went in with the same thing, like my fucking gums were all swollen and infected and really painful, and they're like, "Oh, we got to get this out right now." So at least you got yeah. to like get get sent home and. I mean, does is it all fucked up now? Does it feel any better? Yeah, it feels it feels fine. I'm good. Did they give you antibiotics? Yeah, they gave me a bunch of and and one refill for to hold me over for when I go to my mom's because I told them that like I'm going out there, so I don't want to get it beforehand. Like, yeah, you shouldn't like that's not a good idea because the the pressure change could. Oh yeah, I don't know. It can hurt really bad um, if you're so, dealing with it. Oh, and I get two antibiotics, one for my teeth and one for my ass chlamydia. So when I had mine pulled out, they, you know, there were all kinds of restrictions on what you can eat. And the first day I was able to eat regular food again, I went and got a chalupa. Yes, a chalupa <laughs> from Taco Bell. It's chalupa time. And and it felt like there was a piece of meat stuck back there. So I reached in and went to pull it out. And it ended up being a piece of dead gum. Oh! It was like that ah! long. Oh, God! Oh! You've been oh. meatballed. Did it, did it hurt when it you didn't pulled it out? No, no, it, did, it didn't hurt. But. Well, the, I mean, the sketchiest thing, and Jeff, this is one of those times where I know you think doctors and dentists are all fucking quacks and mechanics making things up when you show up to pay more but when they when they do remove the the wisdom teeth they tell you to not smoke and don't use straws or anything cuz like like the suction pressure can suck the blood clot out of the hole where the tooth was and then you and get cause dry socket dry socket which will just be a hollow cavern going right down to your jawbone that's permanent. So that also, since you're not supposed to be sucking through a straw, that also means you need to stop sucking penises. I knew it. I knew it. Kevin, Kevin See, set you up for you to spike that one right on me. I didn't take that low, low-hanging low fruit, Jeff. No, oh, I, saw, I saw you planning it. You guys probably <laughs> texted back and forth. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I mean, it was the best case scenario. Like, I don't have any cavities. I don't have any anything else going on. I'm just like, yeah, you should get wisdom teeth taken out. But I don't, again, I think I talked about this last week. I don't take as good care of my teeth as I should be. So after I get the wisdom teeth, I'm going to get like a, a deep cleaning or whatever. and Or get my wisdom teeth taken out. I'm going to get a deep cleaning and shit like that. And Because the doctor was also like, yeah, we're not... 
I don't think it's you should get these deep cleanings before your wisdom teeth get taken out. Like you need, you need to get those out, dude. I'm like, all right. So, like, did they did they check for cavities or anything while they were in there, or just looked at the infection? They just looked at the infection. But I mean, the guy was in my mouth, and I would assume he would bring up like, yeah, it sounded really bad, huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, he was checking around in there, so I would assume he'd be like, yeah, I mean, we got to get your wisdom teeth taken out, and you got these cavities to clean up. Yeah. And like, I you know, I look at my teeth every day, and like, they look fine. So, you know, so, you know, I, mean, I, do you- I didn't think there were any cavities in there, and Again, if if there were, I would assume he'd say something because it's also like it's a business for him too. It's like, yeah, we're gonna get your cleanings, but we also gonna get your ta- cavities done or these cavities done, and you know. So, do you did you think that he might make up cavities where there weren't any to sort of fleece you? Yeah, I'm always a little worried about that kind of stuff when it comes to doctors and dentists. We talk, <laughs> we've talked about this over the years, so yeah. it's. I feel like sometimes going to a doctor or a dentist would be like going to a mechanic. Um, yeah. They just like find things like to add to your bill. But no, like does I guess I didn't ask him afterwards and maybe I should have, but like, am I right to assume that if I had cavities, he, the dentist would have mentioned them when he was looking in my mouth. I, I assume. Well, they can't always <laughs> spot him with the eye. They got to take that little, that little, hook thing and then they stick it in there and if the if it like sticks when they go to pull it out that means you got a cavity well he did that to a couple teeth on just on my left side and it was fine so i don't know that's good news yeah so yeah i mean it went as good as well as i could have hoped um i had some swelling at the gum where the infection was but it's not as swollen anymore and like i don't really even need to be taking antibiotics like i feel fine so, Were you, good. did you go in freaked out? Did, did you have like a whole bunch of um, nervous swamp ass? <laughs> no, I, I am, I do get swamp ass kind of in general because uh, I'm fucking <laughs> fat and sweaty piece of shit. But, I did have swamp ass, but nothing to do with the dentist. Yeah, yeah. It was just <laughs> your standard swamp ass, not your dental swamp ass. We should come up with like a, a an anti swamp ass device like um <laughs> a swamp ass irrigation system yeah you ever seen like on the side of the road when there's a big storm coming and they lay out those long like almost like salami looking motherfuckers on the side of the road nah i'm not sure uh-huh. come on drink i Is know what he's talking i've never for? seen them used that in that way no like the stuff they put in the water when there's an oil spill to keep the oil from spreading. Like what if there was like a shrunken down version of those? that's like, like more hot doggy and you can just lay it down the length of your ass crack and it sucks up all the swamp ass. So a man pond man ponds. Can we, has some, anybody invented man ponds? I don't think that, uh, you need a better name for that, for them than that. I'm not, I'm not wearing a man pond. I don't care a, how swampy my ass gets. What a pussy. I don't know that there is a branded man pond. Well, I just Googled tampons for man ass. And the top result is someone asked Cora, is it unhealthy for men to use tampons in their buttocks? (laughs) I mean, that is kind of technically the same question you're asking. Well, this kind of sounds like they're shoving it in their anus. And this is just resting in your butt crack like a hot dog in a bun. Um, Can you still get toxic shock syndrome from that, though? Maybe. Oh, this is a British person, too, because they're calling it an arse. What, what if, why do British people put R's in there? Never understood that. Okay. I don't know. I think it's like they don't want to curse, and they want to get away with saying a curse. No, I think arse is just how they say ass. I don't think it's like a self-censoring thing. I think if you say arse on British TV, it'll, they'll bleep you. Uh, I am a girl, and I have done it just moments ago. <laughs> Regrettably, I did it before I looked at this, immediately deciding I wanted it right out of my arse. Upon trying to take it out, I was met with 
a feeling very much like pulling a tampon out of my vagina when I had no fluids to lubricate it. Lots of pain. Oh, yeah, that's no right. Oh, so like, shit. That's yeah. shocking. Taking a, a tampon out of a vagina when it's dry is kind of like giving the inside of a of a kuchana an Indian burn. <laughs> Actually, is, like, are you supposed to say Native American burn or has, the, has there been like a PC term to replace that yet? Indigenous Take people's it. burn. Yeah, it's indigenous indigenous people burn. Man, that's a lot of syllables. Uh, let me see here. Indigenous is a word that I pronounce correctly, and I don't think I should be able to. Like that's a word that typically would trip me up, but I think I get it. Indigenous. Indigenous. Why? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I look at it and I wonder, like, how do I know how to say that? <laughs> yeah, this is all inserting. Okay, I'm going to reword tampons. For swamp ass. Let's see. Search man pond. You search man pond. I'm already searching tampons for swamp ass. I've I did not come up with that term. I heard it somewhere, and I want to say it was Craig Robinson. <laughs> oh, oh, I have had swamp ass my whole life, but after breast cancer treatment and being in menopause, get this fucking pop up out of here. It has gotten worse. I sit a lot for work and only wear cotton underwear with loose-fitting pants. But between that and my 90-minute commute every day, I am changing my underpants as soon as I get home from work. I do not use any douching products. This is the fucking greatest post ever. And shower daily. Would period underwear help? Period underwear? Maybe that's the answer to our swampy-ass problems. Uh... I have looked extensively at reviews and can't get a clear answer for what brand is the best. Thank you. Uh, and there's so many posts. I think it would make it worse. I've never had a p- pair of period underwear that's more breathable than your standard panty. Panty? I didn't know there was a non-plural usage of panties, but panty... I guess calling somebody a panty sniffer. Man, sorry. Or panty waist. I'm sorry everybody has to sit here and listen to me fucking spin my brain tires here. Just being bombarded with all this awesome information. All right. I am opening a new tab. New Google, guys. Here's what I'm on the the, the, t- the trail of now. Um, how do you treat swamp ass? Cause I am like you, Jeff. I I am a big swamp ass sufferer. Long drives, especially in the summer, that that gets me big time. And I, I'm it's so bad to the point where sometimes I'm nervous that there's going to be like an almond shaped sweat stain in the butt crack of my jeans. Follow these tips to keep your. Yeah, we back definitely going. wouldn't want anybody to think you accidentally shit yourself. Exactly. I mean, either way, it's embarrassing, right? A streak around your ass. Yeah. Look, Kevin thinks it's much more acceptable to poop your pants than it is to have sweat in your butthole. What? I mean, if somebody does Did see that, Kevin? a stain like that on your ass, it's like, all right, this guy, bet, worst case scenario, this guy shit his pants. Best case scenario, it's swamp ass. Both not ideal. Uh, it is a universal problem. Swamp crack, sweaty bum, butt sweat, whatever you want to call it. Just know it happens to the best of us. See, even Shuddy Boy trying to act all fucking high and mighty making fun of us. I'm not making fun of you for swamp ass. I get it too. I had it so bad yesterday I chafed. Ah, Jeff and I were lying. Let's laugh at Shuddy Boy. Okay. Why it happens. Here we go. We're getting some real motherfucking science on this show. Uh, First, know that everyone sweats back there. Some people just happen to sweat more than others. Your body has two types of sweat glands. Ecrine ecrine glands, which secrete an odorless mixture of water and salt to cool your skin and lower your body temperature. And apocrine glands, which produce the smelly substance we usually associate with sweating. The good news is that your butt only contains ecrine glands. So while butt sweat might be visible through your pants... No! Oh, no! That's the worst! 
Maybe I am sweating through my pants. It doesn't leave an odor. Oh, pff, please. Fucking sniff my boxers, you fucking highfalutin article. I was just kidding. The good news, uh, butt sweat results from the same thing that increase that increase in your body temperature can cause sweating in other body parts, including being in hot temperatures, exercising, feeling stressed or nervous, wearing thick or unbreathable fabrics. You've got two fleshy buttocks pressed together, which already creates the ideal space for sweat to develop with no place to go. That's what I'm fucking talking about. What's the goddamn solution? Cotton or moisture wicking underwear. Carry a spare pair in your bag? Know where bathrooms are? This is not the solutions I wanted. I'm thinking of like some sort of spray, like axe for your butt. Or, like I said, the, a man pond that you can just lay across. Butt antiperspirant? Yeah. I wonder if I could try that. Just buy a separate stick of deodorant that I only use in my ass crack because I don't want cross-contamination. But it would have to be antiperspirant, not deodorant. Yeah, same thing. No, they're definitely not the same thing. Do you swipe two different things in your pits every day? No, I only wear deodorant. Antiperspirant clogs your sweat glands so you don't sweat. Oh. Uh, baby powder is being proposed as a solution. I don't know if I want to powder my ass. Why not? Well... All you do, and I mean, I hoped to, I, I don't know why I thought there would be any in the house, but last night I ripped the bathroom apart, hoping by some miracle there might be some baby powder in there that moved with me. For your ass. From Bethlehem. For my chafed ass, yes. But if you powder before the day, not only will you smell fresh, it'll... uh absorb the sweat better than just your undies will. Well, my 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 fear, shuddy boy, is that if I powder my ass, it'll kind of be like if there's, I don't know, a dirt patch and, and it starts sprinkling, that now all of a sudden this powder in my ass is just turning into mud. How, okay, well, how much baby powder do you think that you're walking in like a diaper of baby powder? You're just lightly coating your, your bottom. So I have to just get a in light, a, like a position on my back. Like I'm a baby getting my diaper changed. I mean, for the sprinkling. If I may demonstrate, please, you basically, you, you dump it in your hand like this. And then oh, you, you bend over, kind of spread, and then you just smack your smack your butthole. Oh, excuse me, I have to go powder my floor. nose. All right. Uh, if you but, wait till next week, I, I can walk you through it. All right, we'll do a how-to <laughs> video and put it on our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shuddy Boy, when you said that your ass was chafed. Are we talking monkey butt? No, we're not talking my butthole. We're talking... Wait, whoa, whoa, hold on. What does monkey butt mean specifically, I guess? A red irritated butthole is how I'm interpreting it. I always like thought that monkey butt, butt... I always thought that monkey butt is like if you walk around too much and your ass cheeks rub together and get chafed and then they're hurt, they're sore and hurty. Okay, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, that's then what I, I did have monkey, monkey butt. butt. All right, let's look at monkey butt on man. Internet is he like won't ser- he won't search for mampon, but he'll search monkey butt. Well, I'm I'm searching all these things. You can't search one thing, Shuddy. Monkey butt urban dictionary. The fourth um, host of MSPH this week is the internet. Oh my goodness, monkey butt has different meanings. So. On a hot summer day when you don't wipe your ass good after a shit and your asshole gets chafed and then sweat mixes in, fucking up your whole day. What an eloquent entry in Urban Dictionary. 
But there was another version. When your ass gets so chafed that it gets red like a monkey's butt, after riding a motorcycle all day and your ass hurts so bad that you walk like a monkey, the soreness in the rectal area after participating in activities as anal sex! Didn't know that. Mm, I saw it coming. Acute, affectionate name for a member of the opposite sex. Used as a greeting. What's up, monkey butt? That's an old one from 2006. This one's crazy. This is from 2005. A man that is developing a bald spot on the back of his head resembling a baboon's or chimpanzee's ass. Usage. Check out the monkey butt on that guy. Oh! Also, monkey butt, a prolapsed arse. Again, these fucking British people and their arses. Wow. I never thought a prolapsed asshole was a monkey butt. Huh. All right, Shuddy, I'll fucking Google man pun. I Googled it. I have it up on Urban Dictionary right now. Uh, it is a common term, apparently, for a tightly wound paper towel or toilet paper approximately six inches in length that is placed between the ass cheeks to prevent leakage. Uh, developed in the mid-90s in response to the use of olein vegetable oil substitute, which caused anal leakage in many substance, in subjects. Huh? When olein was no longer found in food products, the man pond was nearly eradicated from the shelves. Why don't I remember this? This brief point in history when everybody's fucking ass was leaking i don't think i I don't remember that either i don't think it's that thing but a man pond is a term for toilet paper wedged between the ass cheeks okay that's what i was going for so like i got a roll of paper towels here and just take a strip here rolled up like a blunt hold on I'm going to get this nice and tight. Uh, eh, 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 eh. Rolling it up. All right, and I'll just go. Ew, 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 ew. How big is your ass that you need it to be that long? It's just one fucking strip, man. I bet you it's uncomfortable. Put and it in. Not all asses are created equally. Like, I bet you if you measured from the nape of my butt crack to my grundle and then you did the same thing to kim kardashian she's got way more length than i do you think she has more length or do you think it's just more bulbous i mean i think more bulbous just translates to more all right now i got to get down on my knees like i'm fucking jacking off here just so i don't get us kicked off of youtube all right hold on you and neil here we go all right pants are coming down wouldn't that be ironic if my mom like when I was born, my middle name was Neil. All right. Instead, it's Kyle. Wow. It? Neil with a K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So this this is way more length than I need because right now it is. Like sticking out the back of your pants, right? Not Basically. only that. No, no. I, 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 I measured that right. It is. The paper towels do start right at the nape of my ass, but they go under my grundle and they are aggressively encroaching into nutsack land. See, I, I also listen. Feel like this is I, just a this is just a first prototype. That, when I pull know. this out, there's going to be fucking poop on it. I'm I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but all right, pants are coming back on. Let's see how comfortable this is. This also isn't ideal because, like, okay, maybe this will absorb my swamp ass, but now I have a fucking hot dog of paper towels in my ass. Yeah, uh, a hot dog of moist paper towel in your butt cheeks. Yeah, with poo with poo kisses on it. All You're right, not okay. wearing pajama pants today. What's the occasion? I don't know. I just put I put I put jeans on. All right, <laughs> now that I'm sitting back down. A little uncomfortable, but not as bad as I thought it would be. Shuddy, maybe your mic just exploded. Yeah, because of the fire. 
It's uncomfortable, but not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, I wonder how um, absorbent this will be by the time we get to Patreon land. Man, I was not expecting Well, are you to having swamp this. ass currently? Dude, if I'm if I have a pulse, I have swamp ass. I think that just comes with the territory of having a badonka donk. You know, for a man who's 41 and 3 quarters, my ass is 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 holding up quite nice if I if I could say so myself. Like I remember back in the day when JLo turned 40 and people were like, "Well, look at that. She's still got hell of an ass." I'm holding up too. I don't see any BuzzFeed articles I, giving me props. I'm actually, for the first time in my life, getting an ass, which is fun. <laughs> Been doing squats? Is this snowboard yeah. related? Used to just be squats, a fucking anus hanging off a spinal cord, but now I got cheeks. Squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, you know. No big deal. Man. Shuddy. Have you been boxing still? I have not. Uh, yeah, it's annoying, right? It's a lot of work. It's not annoying. It's that I'm being was being trained for free, so I'm not. If I'm not being hit up to go to the boxing gym, I am not being like, "Yo, can I come to the boxing gym?" So ah, I've your, just been working out at home. Your seven day trial of Paramount Plus expired. <laughs> Well, uh, that that actually, okay, I just went back and looking for my notes for the show today, which shockingly doesn't have swamp ass anywhere in there. Did um, that poll we put up about being anxious at the dentist, I'm kind of curious to see where that ended. Uh, I Honestly, I haven't checked it since the day after, and it was still open, I believe, but it was pretty much 50-50. Please hold. Okay. I'm trying to pull it. I wonder up. if we ever chopped in a poll. I feel like it's been decided one way or the other. Why is Matthew Lillard trending? Uh, of all the votes, oh, no. 55% said, hell yes. 45 said, I ain't no bitch. Close. Wow. So, very close. Wow. Very close. Okay. Technically, Matthew- my side won the majority, though. Matthew Lillard is trending because they announced a live-action Scooby-Doo series is coming to Netflix. And people want Matthew Lillard to come back as Shaggy. Or Shaggy's dad. As a as a 55-year-old Shaggy? <laughs> that I makes the Shaggy character rolling around with kids a lot more creepy. Yeah. Well, what if everybody's 50? Ooh. Yeah. Scooby-Doo has to get the band back together. Yeah. Although Scooby-Doo right. probably got put down a long time ago. Yeah, Scooby-Doo would have. It would be like Scooby-Doo number three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like Matthew Lillard. I did a show with him once. He was a really nice guy. I want to rewatch. Well, he doesn't have a bigger career after Scream. But I guess, I mean, Scooby-Doo... Probably paid for a house or two, so I hope so. He also he he did he was in um Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, so, he was the bad guy in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie that just came out last year. Hopefully that made his, his stock go up a bit. I bet you he doesn't have to worry about shoving paper towels in his ass. No, he's got somebody that'll do it for him. That's what I want. Uh Jeeves, please, it's time to change my man pond. Mind the poop. <sighs> uh, I will say, Shuddy, Carl and I took your recommendation to go see the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And? and uh, we are. I heard it was very not woke entertainment and it was pretty awesome, according to Outkick. Not woke? Yeah. I mean, there are people of color in it. They might want to. Uh, they might want to reevaluate their stance. Well, I can't judge a book by its cover. Was there no uh, black people on the front or on the poster? 
that could be what it is. But if you watch the movie, white people and black people get along. And I know that is considered very woke. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah. Women Sounds too. like a DEI movie. Yeah, women, women too. Women kicking ass and out shooting men. I don't okay. know. They Sounds might, terrible. They might lose some readers, but uh, Carl and I were very grateful for your recommendation, Shuddy, because we both enjoyed it very much. Hell of a flick. Good. Very fun. A fun Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, I mean, the Nazi body count is astounding. And as as, we, as we've said many times on MSPH, watching Nazis get slaughtered never gets old. And uh, that no, it doesn't. So who's that guy? Um, he's like insanely jacked. I feel like this dude just came out of nowhere. Alan like, Richman. Yeah, he's Alan he's Richman. In Richman, right? sorry. Yeah, he's which is crazy that Outkick likes this movie with how outspokenly woke Alan Richson is. Oh, they were pissed about that. But I think they like all of Alan Richson's movies. Isn't he in, isn't he like Jack Reacher? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I know he got big from like some recent series that I haven't checked out, but apparently people loved and like, this is the first, I think I'm pretty sure this is my first time seeing this guy in something. And, he is fucking um, he awesome. He was in. He was in Blue Mountain State. Didn't watch which that. Which was a football comedy sitcom about college kids. Uh, he played Hawk in the Titans show. Didn't watch that. Um, and he was he was pretty good on it. Uh, I I like Alan Richson. Um, yeah, I guess he was in Fast X which I just watched to watch, and I don't really remember it. But I guess he's been around for a minute, but he's just really having his moment in the sun. And I mean, he he is, like, uncomfortably ripped. He is huge in this movie. Like He, has, he is fucking massive. Like, negative 3% body fat. Like, even his eyeballs are, are jacked. But a really good actor. He's fucking charming. Um funny i really like that guy yeah he like, I, uh, he's like jacked like an arnold schwarzenegger way where it's like it has to be part of every story i mean it's it's he is distractingly shredded i'll say that right like it's like like kind of like john almost like uh, john cena would be another example yeah yeah it's like you can't go you can't like, you can't do a movie with John Cena and not mention it at some level. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's I mean, like the joke he, is like he's a pussy despite being that big. Like either he's way. So big in this movie, Henry Henry Cavill looks small. Yeah. He makes Superman look like a bitch. But man, that was cool I I mean, Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie is fucking awesome. I really like Guy Ritchie. And this is just, uh, we were talking about starting it this weekend, but we didn't. But uh, the gentleman is definitely on the, the watch docket. As it should be. Yep. There's uh, He's, there's old Jack McRipperton. Jeff's not even looking at the screen. The person I was... I had, so- I had it on my... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're he's... not going to go to Chris and Harper, but we're going to go to Alan Rich- Richson, huh? <laughs> and your homie, Carrie uh, Ewells, he was awesome in it. That's an icon. Yeah. Fucking solid flick, man. Go Guy Ritchie. Yeah, I'm with you, Shuddy. That's a four-dicker. Yeah, it, it was a fun movie. Definitely a pleasant surprise. And yeah, Guy Ritchie fucking kills it. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Good, good shit. Good shit. I was also on uh, Doug Loves Movies again. Episode just came out today. So if you're a, a Kevin Craft completionist, completionist with a C, of course. Available to download right now. Check it out. Jeff, you had a, a seems like you had a bit of a weekend. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know about that. I uh, I only have one movie to review. Wait, my, I think I'm forgetting something though. Oh yeah, this is actually two weekends ago. I forgot to bring this up. Um, I went to Rich's kid's second birthday party, and Rich's parties are always awesome. Um, it's usually mostly catered by like his mom. They just make homemade Vietnamese food. But this time they had homemade homemade Vietnamese food and a taco guy. But the fucking cake that they gave the kid was Dorian cake. Yeah, and that's um, supposed to be like one of the stinkiest foods in the world, right? It, yeah, it's super stinky. And because like pretty much everyone at the party was like Vietnamese besides me. Um, so that really, I guess my, the, my crew, my brothers and my lady, oh, uh, my brother. Yeah. 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 The diversity we brought to the table, actually. <laughs> um, we were like the only like table that wasn't in love with it, but everyone at the table besides me tried the Dorian fruit cake and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You couldn't it even try smelled it. It's like diarrhea. No, fuck that. It smelled like diarrhea and everyone was wanting to overlook it and pretend like, or I don't know, they, they were able to deal with the diarrhea smell and just power through. And my brother said it was actually pretty good, but I was like, fuck that. Like you, you just, it just reeked, it reeked like shit. Reeked like pussy. dirty ass. You're a fucking snack sommelier and you can't even try cake. Oh, it's, have you ever had durian fruit? No. Gross, dude. I told you we played a, a prank freshman year of college where we 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 put it under our friend's bed in the dorm rooms and they ended up calling like FDNY and NYPD got called because they thought it could have been a gas leak. <laughs> like that's how fucking gross it was. Jimmy's and I just man. couldn't do it. And everyone was into this cake and no way, dude. It was gross, so I forgot to mention that the other day. So like when you're at the week. when you're at the party and like <laughs> like like they, look at me and you know me I'm not someone that turns down cake or any dessert and I was just no like you I will not be a part of this I will not be eating it I think I even left the table when it was being eaten by everyone else. So did did this come out of nowhere like you like they were like all right here comes the Dorian cake or did they just start serving this cake and you're like oh. Who fucking farted? What the fuck is that? I mean, I guess a little bit of both. It did kind of come out of nowhere. And I don't know. I didn't pay attention to it. And then when it got to the table, like, and you could, like, you could smell it. It was fucking gross. Did it smell better or worse than sewer stroming? Better. Okay. But you can't eat sewer stroming. I mean, I guess the Swedes do, but. That's after it being prepared and Yeah, I feel like they know. they kind of cheat. Like they 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 like to flex that they eat surstroming, but I think when they really do it, they take like, you know, the size of like a tab of acid of it and they put it on a cracker and then they dump a whole bunch of sour cream on it and like it's yeah. kind of cheating. For sure. But yeah, there's no shortcuts shortcuts on this Dorian fruit cake. It was just just Dorian fruit diarrhea. It was fucking gross. So in your crew, so Bill and, and his girl, they showed up, right? And did they try it? Yep. And they, they said it wasn't bad. She tried some. Yeah. Um, Jeff Lee, who was at uh, Cheech's birthday dinner, him and his girl showed up. They're Asian, but I don't, they didn't really, they didn't, like grow up eating Dorian fruitcake. I think they're both Korean. Maybe just like that's a Vietnamese thing. So Did everybody at the table it. eat more than a bite, or was it? Did they just try it and that? Was oh, that? I think she's probably got seconds. You know, on that fat fuck. <laughs> so were you <laughs> salty that everybody else had dessert and you didn't? Like, did no, you I didn't have, care. Did you have I don't to need stop any on the dessert. way home? No, yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, we're gonna stop. We gotta stop at Yogurt Land, guys. I didn't get my fill. Oh no! All the Yogurt Land yogurt is diarrhea flavored too. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm out as like a little kid. No, who gets? We got. I need a McFlurry or something. Yeah. This is bullshit. You motherfuckers don't have any non-diarrhea desserts. <laughs> oh man, I, I Kevin, you would have tried it, obviously. Yeah. Of course, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, because nah, I, I, I have heard that about Dorian, that it is like one of the most vicious smells that exists on Earth, but it, it doesn't taste that way. I know Sorstroming smells like someone barfed on a diarrhea, and it, it tastes that way too. But if, if, if I know that once I start eating it, it's going to be good, I can, I can like power through it or maybe pinch my nose so I don't smell... Like a poopy diaper on the way in. Was it poopy diapery? Yeah. It smells like shit. <laughs> Fucking gross. <laughs> and I don't know how you can separate the two. Like smell and taste are so like they're such connected senses. That's true. I don't know. Like I I I, I just couldn't like I would was, I wasn't gonna be able to overlook or block out the smell for whatever taste was coming. Yeah, that's fair enough. It was just like, it was like thin, like pancake size, like well. um, cake sheets. Like it was really leaning into the Dorian fruit cream. I was like, fuck that. You can't mix it in with some chocolate cake and I don't know, some fr- like regular fruit on top. Like it was just <laughs> like, it was pretty much just like Dorian fruit pancakes. It was fucking gross. Yeah. Plus a little respect for Rich. <laughs> I mean... Not sure how he's going to be as a dad. He's not off to a good start. Did the baby like it? Hell no, the baby didn't eat that shit. They, really? had, they had cookies that me and the baby were eating. Hey, oh, are you going to finish that bottle, baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leo, let me, get, let me get a cookie, Leah. <laughs> Uh, what um what uh what movie did you see? I saw anyone but you, the rom com with Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney. It came out on I think Netflix this past week. I didn't have anything else to watch. Couldn't go to sleep post basketball. And you like uh, Sydney Sweeney? Love Sydney Sweeney. Who doesn't? I kind of like Glenn Powell too, uh, for different reasons, obviously, but. <laughs> He like his he's got, he's got some, he's got some leading man charisma. He's got a future in this business, probably. Yeah, I'd like to. I I, I feel like the the true test is going to be Twisters. If, if, Twi- can, if Twisters if comes out, movie. and I and like I like Twisters and I like Glenn Powell in it, I feel like that it's like all right, come on in. I accept the. All right, I, I hear what you're saying. I agree too. I thought he killed it in Top Gun, but you're right. He I liked him like, a lot in Top Gun. He was he, needs, a, he was a really good Iceman analog. Yep, he needs like a like Kevin was saying. It's just, he needs like a leading role where he kills it and the movie kicks ass. Um, and that wasn't the case with this rom com. It, it it sucked for the most part. And I'm into the rom com. I'm into a good rom com whenever when I run into one. And this one had moments. Again, like seeing Sydney Sweeney just move is good enough. Like I can spend sixty minutes doing that. And this movie is only like ninety minutes. So um just you know, having her on screen most of the time was awesome. Her and Glenn Powell's connection was 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 solid it was pretty you know it was it was all right i guess um but like the jokes were corny um all the other side characters were kind of corny and lame did you know it's based on shakespeare Um, it's based on what shakespeare that movie i mean every fucking movie is well what what, (laughs) which shakespeare Story uh, specifically was it based on much to do about nothing. Gotcha. I didn't but I read mean, that one. I I I am not gonna sit here and pretend like I like Shakespeare. I I think Shakespeare is boring as fuck. I think iambic pentameter is lame. I think the all the thous and doths annoy me. I even did a Shakespeare play when I was in high school, and I fucking hated that. 
Shakespeare can eat my man pun. Uh oh, I'm gonna get canceled um, now. There goes my career. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely wouldn't like recommend to someone to go out of their way and watch this. If you're bored, whatever, throw it on. Um, but it really wasn't that good of a movie. I'm only gonna suck two point two five Sydney Sweeney dicks. No, oh, no Glenn Powell dicks. No, I'm not sucking a single gun, pal. Dick. Now when Sydney <laughs> Sweeney's dick is there for the sucking. Man, do you, what about that whole thing where that lady came out and was like, "Yeah, Sydney Sweeney's not a good actor and she's not attractive." It's like, fucking what? Are you just trying to be like Edge Lord yeah. of the day? Yeah, I mean, I could listen to not a good actress or actor because I don't. I mean, whatever. I'm not an expert, but like, I'm certainly an expert on judging whether or not women are hot, and she's clearly hot. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, that just that just sounds like I'm going to say up is down and get headlines today. Actually, no, I think because Carl and I were talking about it. And um, I think that woman was like a professor and she said it in a lecture or something. And then one of the students was like, man, can you believe what this fucking lady said in class today? And I guess she's worked in the industry before. So it was like producer slams Sydney Sweeney and then her reps put something out like man it's kind of weird that like uh, a woman in the industry took time out of her day to put another woman in the industry down for just no fucking reason whatsoever just unwarranted shots fired I did I, I mean I told you guys I saw that immaculate movie right the horror movie she was in yeah that was pretty solid I enjoyed that I don't know, man. I don't think I don't think Sydney Sweeney's going anywhere anytime soon. One of these, uh, like one of the jokes in the movie was this guy has a really corny, like Serenity song. He calls it Glenn Powell, which is like a song he listens to while he's flying to calm him down and like make him chill out. And it's that song. I had to look it up. Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield, a Bedingfeld. Or betting field, excuse me. Um, Can you sing a few bars? As soon as you hear, as soon as you hear, you would know it. But I was sing us a couple wonder. of bars, please. I don't. Have I, any I, idea can, what you're I talking cannot. About. I cannot do that. Um, School of the lyrics. I, come on. I, I have to. I have to. Come on. Give it well, a shot. I ra- I wrapped that that ditty for you guys. You can do this. All right. Can I just? You did what to Diddy? I wrapped that Diddy line from Ready to Die. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, what did you do to Diddy? All right, hold on. <laughs> Unwritten, Tasha Bedingfield, karaoke. God, am I going to do this? Am I going to do this? Come on. Uh, let me click into it. Oh, wait, I got a commercial. All right, hold on. Skip wait. ad. So I'm getting the karaoke. All right. Share your screen, Jeff, before you hit play. So we can follow along. (laughs) Uh, Hold on. I have to give permission for everybody to share. All participants. All right. Now you're good. Oh, man. Are you guys going to make fun of me? You're not going to make fun of me, right? No. That's not what you guys do. We're not that, we're not that kind of show. We're not that kind of show. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm pretty insecure about my singing abilities and my karaoke. I've never done karaoke before. Could you fucking imagine Jeff is leading up to this and he's got the voice of an angel? Imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like fucking Brennan from <laughs> Step Brothers. It's like Susan Boyle. <laughs> I'm not even lying, Brennan. You sound like an angel. All right. Uh <laughs> Share screen. Share screen. Sorry. Can you see it? Loading. Yep. Yep. We can see it. Natasha Benningfield. Yeah. Can you guys hear it too? If I play it? No, we won't be able to hear it. You can't hear it? No. So it'll be acapella, but we can see what you go with the words. So the jingles come in, and I'm hoping they highlight as it as it goes. It will, yes. I yeah. mean, that's how karaoke okay. works. All right, all right. 
I am unwritten, can't read my mind. I'm undefined. I'm just beginning. The pen's in my hand. Oh. Ending unplanned. Sing it, Jeff. Staring at the blank page before you open up the dirty window. Uh. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance so close you can almost (laughs) taste it. Release your inhibitions. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Drink yourself in your words unspoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Good job. I honestly. Wow. For, yeah, until that very oh. last part, I was like, I have no idea what this fucking song is. And then the hook is where you got me. So you guys can't hear anything, right? No. No. It was, so you're you just, just going off my, my voice. All right. So you, you know what song I'm talking about, though, when I got to the yeah, hook, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you the just did that all way. acapella for us and the Puminati, Jeff. That, <laughs> was that all right? Because I was very, was, I'm like starting to like, sweat. I'm getting a little nervous. If it didn't take a lot of courage, I would be busting your balls. But that the the courage outweighs anything that you lacked in, in vocal ability. I will say it has, right. has nothing to do with your rendition, Jeff, but I fucking hate that song. Yeah, yeah, the song's lean, but I was thinking... Do you guys have like a serenity song or like, I guess just a lame pop song that you can't help but love and aren't afraid to admit it? I mean, I have several, but. I do too. I mean, there, I, I feel like we're in like a really good, this is going to be a very lame sentence to say, but we're in almost like a golden age of pop right now. Cause there's, before she got canceled, and I, I said this before, Lizzo's got some good songs. Um, I think Duke, I don't think Lizzo's canceled anymore, though. No, she is. I think she's she's fucking done. Uh, but like, I think Dua Lipa's awesome. I think uh, Doja Cat is awesome. Yeah, does she do Paint the Town Red? That's Doja Cat, right? I, th- I like that song. Think, but like, I don't know. I don't know the the names of the songs, yeah. but like, anytime Carl puts on Dua Lipa, I'm like, man, this song's fucking sick. I think yeah, Dua Lipa is kind of good. Who's that? That like super young girl that's like having a moment. Uh, uh, Olivia Rodrigo. I think she's really good. Mark yeah. Rooster loves her. She's awesome. He he drove it. He texted me at the beginning of April. He's like, "You should be proud of your friend. He just drove himself to New York City by himself." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's great." And then I was scrolling through Facebook later in the day, and he drove himself to New York City to see Olivia Rodrigo at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I mean, I bet it was a great show. <laughs> it's like, this is what you drove yourself to, you went by yourself to New York City for. I will say, I do have an all-time favorite song that is probably out of the blue. So, like, even through all the death metal, all the hip-hop, all the stuff, all the phases that I've gone through in life, Ever since I was a little kid, my favorite song, which has never wavered, has been uh, Road to Nowhere by Talking Heads. I fucking love that song. I have to listen to it. I'm struggling to remember it. There's a lot going on. There's like fucking accordions. There's like, it's it's Talking Heads throwing everything in the kitchen sink at a track. <laughs> but it's sick, man. I fucking love it. A fucking orchestra up there. I've I've heard it like twenty thousand times, and it's still like if it comes on on random, I'm just like Ooh, still slaps. That's getting a two for Tuesday. I'm playing that again right when right when the ending hits. <laughs> so that 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 can, that is uh, kind of like a comfort. That is a, a really good song. I I wouldn't consider Talking Heads pop though. No, it's just like an out of out of character song that like I can put on and it'll it'll cheer me up. How do we feel about Natalie? And Bruglia torn. <laughs> Not a As giant. Someone fan. who came of age when that song was really popular. I see what you did there. I'm I came of age there in that song too. In my pants. <laughs> uh, all right, fair enough. 
Uh, I mean, like I, I will say this: I don't hate Lady that Gaga song. Kicks ass, but I also don't like that song. It's it's, Papa, it's right. neutral. Paparazzi. Well, maybe it's not your Serenity song. Maybe it's just my Serenity song. It's yeah, fine. Shuddy. What's your What's your Serenity song? Jeff Jeff likes Natalie and Brulia. Is that even a term, or is that just specific to the movie? Because that's the first time I've ever heard that. That might be the first time I've heard it too. I mean, I have comfort. That was movies. like a funny little bit. Like I've got, I've got, I've got movies that I can put on at any time if I'm like depressed. That'll make me feel good. Like um, Hot Rod, the Andy Samberg movie, and uh, <laughs> I, was say, I watched Rocky the other night. <laughs> yeah, I made Draven watch Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping a couple of weeks ago. That's a funny one. Oh, I love that movie. It still is fucking hysterical. I can do the um, same thing with the Steve Carell Get Smart movie. For some reason, that movie just goes right to my fucking funny bone. I don't think... I can't think of a Serenity song. I listen to so much that I don't go back to... Normally, if I'm sad, like, I have a... On my Spotify, I have a playlist that's just called Bummed, uh, but it's not songs that make me feel better. Oh, they're just songs to further compound your bummedness? Yep. They're, they're songs that fit the mood. Uh, and I don't know if you guys can see this, are. but I have a playlist that's just called Boner Jams. It won't show up, but yeah, I have a Boner Jams playlist. And that's not for when I go to the bone zone. That's just like, um, my... it actually gets me ready for the bone zone. Yeah. Yeah. I listen to that in the stairwell to get myself hyped up to go to the bone zone. <laughs> she's like, she's like, Hold on, Carl. I got to, uh, I go to the bathroom. Like, why are you bringing your AirPods? Uh, I, uh, I gotta go. I have to, I have to listen to hexed by children of Bodom before I make sweet, sweet love to you. <laughs> Since you won't let me listen to it while we make love. <laughs> listen, we can, I can either go to the bathroom with my ear pod, my AirPods, or I can have it play uh, out of Alexa in here. Your, your call, Carl. I feel, I feel like when I was younger, I did used to put music on for the Bone Zone. Um, but I haven't done that in decades because I feel like there's a lot of pressure to match the beat. I'm gonna throw on a podcast next time I'm in the bone zone. Just try to keep me in the last, keep me in the last longer. Yeah. Oh, nice! A, a TED talk about wool sweaters. I I'm, might... gonna, I'm gonna listen to the Zach Lowe podcast about the NBA playoffs. Hey, speaking of listening to things, Since we're Jeff, talking... did you um, did you listen to Forced Gender Reassignment by Cattle Decapitation at the gym? <laughs> Sorry, it's still on my you know, it's still in my library. Uh, I've been meaning to I put it off. I'll, I'll get to it this week. Sorry, Shuddy, what were you saying? Right, you should, you should listen to that before you go to the Bone Zone next, Jeff. That should be your your Serenity oh. or your Get Hype song. <laughs> do they? You think they have like a karaoke video that I can do that one too? I, I would be very surprised if they do. We get, what's it forced? Forced gender reassignment. Cattle decapitation with lyrics. Oh, they oh so that's just going to be a lyric video. It's not going to be the karaoke version. Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean. What are you doing over there, Shuddy? I found it. Let me just... I'm seeing Reggie Miller in a commercial right now. Oh, what? Are you going to try to karaoke it like Jeff did with that? No. <laughs> I was going to send it to Jeff so he can... I'm oh, doing my karaoke. Dude. Give it to Kevin. He knows the words. We can resurrect Jeff Metal. That would be... That would be a good bit to resurrect. I forgot that. I basically just played Napalm Death and had I said we do freestyle over it. I said we resurrect Cam B, Rose B for Campbell Toe first. No, it's not. Um, Shuddy, right. I feel like we cut you off before. Do you have something to say? 
Uh, I was just going to say that if we're while we're talking about talking heads, I, I mean, not to be a basic, but I think Psycho Killer is the one of is the song of theirs that instantly gets me bopping. That's fair enough. That's all I was going to say. Man, Talking Heads, that might be a band that I would like burn a genie wish on to reunite and play live. Because they've been broken up for fucking decades. I think they could still pull it off. Last year, or three months ago, something was posted that they turned down an $80 million offer to tour. Oh, oh, damn it. Somebody fucking nuke their royalties. So they have no choice but to reunite and go out on tour. If Glenn Danzig and Jerry only could put their past behind them, the talking heads should be able to for 80 fucking million dollars. Seriously. What the fuck happened there? Like, you can't just, like, you can't just be okay on stage next to this person for a couple of months and have no other interaction with them other than the music. Yeah, for, for 20 million bucks a piece. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. That's a huge bummer. What are their royal? What are their royalties, though, if they're like $80 million isn't getting us out of bed? I don't know. I mean... Anytime, I feel like Talking Heads songs still show up in a lot of pop culture things like TV shows and movies, and those go. I mean, back in the day, you could get the rights to a song for your movie or TV show for a lot cheaper, but out of nowhere, it just skyrocketed. And maybe it did to offset the fact that nobody buys CDs and stuff anymore. So all the money you make off of your music alone is just from streaming services and but like it's like so, 60 to 80 thousand dollars to use a song in a movie so more information it's a been it's reported that live nation is who offered them 80 million dollars for headlining slots at six to eight festivals festivals like, oh, see, that sucks even more because that means you'd have to buy, like, uh, an outrageous ticket to go to Coachella or some well, shit just to see. Right. But $80 million for six to eight shows. Yeah. Life must I would be- do that. I could see David. I don't Kirk care how pissed off I got off. I got, I got it, Kevin. I, 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 I can see how David Byrne probably doesn't need money, but if you're the other band members of the Talking Heads – maybe the royalties aren't keeping the lights on anymore. I don't know. It's just, that must be a hell of a fucking feud. Who fucked whose wife? I mean, I know the basis is, is who fucked whose mother is a woman, but maybe, maybe she scissored somebody's wife. I don't know. No, no, that's now That's a good question. Would you be able to get over? Which would, would you be able to get over easier? Your buddy fucking your wife or your mom? Oh, fortunately, none of so us. So apparently, are, their breakup is married. David Byrne just quit the band and never told it and didn't tell give them any reason or anything. He just dipped. No shit. So that that means from, that's that's code for he fucked somebody's mom. <laughs> but then this People article that this references says that he regrets doing that. So yeah, fucking take the 80 mil. Come on. I want to see the talking heads live before I die, so or before they die. This yeah, article since you're, is since from you're... August. It, it This direct quote from him from the article, it says, I have regrets on how that was handled. I don't think I did it in the best way, but I think it was kind of inevitable that that would happen anyway. We have a cordial relationship now. We're sort of in touch, but we don't hang out together. Three months later, the news pops up that they turned down $80 million. Maybe Live Nation is looked at as an unethical source of money since them and Ticketmaster are working hand-in-hand to make sure every concert ticket you buy has $75 of bullshit fees tacked onto it. 
So Kevin. Yeah. Since I think you're since you're close to your mom and you've been with Steph for a while, Carl, excuse me. How dare I? Um would you prefer if Shuddy had a go with your mom or with Steph? Carl, excuse me. Or I mean, Nana. I would prefer like I, would, I would prefer <laughs> Shuddy boned my mom and then my Olympic athlete no, no, stepdad no. just beat the shit out of him for it. Uh, do you do you remember uh, when we told Bon Bon that we told your mother he had a crush on her? Oh yeah, he got very bummed out. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor Bon Bon. <laughs> what did wait? What did your stepdad do in the Olympics? So he was a javelin thrower. And he qualified and made the Olympic team. And then that was the year that America protested the Olympics and didn't go. So, Oh, that's yeah. what happened in uh, the Iron Claw movie. One of those guys, uh, one of the Von Erichs, Harry Von Erich. I forget what he was. It might have been, I think it was, it was the wrestling. discus throw. Well, oh, no, I thought it was no, a discus. No, it was throw. discus. You're right. It was discus. So kind of close to javelin. Like they're probably like they might have known each other. Yeah, um, they might have been bunk mates or something. Yeah, and like his. I mean, every every Olympian's lifelong dream is to make obviously to make the Olympics. Yeah, and that's the one time we fucking we weren't even there. Damn, Isn't that dude, so fucked. That's so fucked. So I, I, yeah. he, he's a fucking Olympic athlete. Like just because America protested, he made the fucking team. Have you he talked to him counts. about it? I mean, when I was like, young, he's still probably pissed off was, about it, right? Like that's one of those things you never get over. Actually, I think, <laughs> it's hard to tell. He doesn't seem he's not that bitter of a guy. And him and my mom started dating when I was away in Bing Boing School. So by the time I got home, they I think they were already engaged. And like my mom was telling me on like a phone call about like yeah i'm dating this new guy and he's you know he's a big athlete and he's he's super jacked he's got giant arms and i'm like all right calm down mom (laughs) jeez mom but he's still like he's he's in his late 60s and he still does cross he is an imposing figure for sure yeah he is fucking jacked there is no fucking with my stepdad even being in his like mid to late 60s even being a full grown adult man at this stage of my life, I don't think I would want to get be on the wrong side of Mr. J. Yeah. He could he could bend both of us even, over even his with knees this and spank at my us disposal. And I'm not neither of us are putting up a fight. Mr. J. All right. So Kevin chooses his mom and Shuddy chooses <laughs> Carl. Uh yeah, my Interesting. my stepdad also I did not went, wait a second. I did not <laughs> fucking chime in at all. I am an unwilling participant. I'm Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you caught that, Shuddy. Uh <laughs> but my stepdad also was obsessed with Survivor when it first came out. And he was like, I'm getting on that fucking show. And he's <laughs> he sent in a tape every single season. And the one time he got a call back. They you know, tell him to stop sending tapes. <laughs> it was COVID. No, no, it wasn't COVID. It was <laughs> they um they they make you do like a health screening. So like when you move on to the next round and you're like a serious contender, they have to make sure you're like medically up for it and stuff. So they ran a whole series of tests on him and found out he had cancer. And he had to he had they they caught early stage prostate cancer for his phys- awesome. physical yeah. evaluation to be on Survivor. So he was about to be on Survivor and got that taken away from him because he had fucking cancer. And then that's, the, that's pretty shitty. Look. The next the next year, you know, they they filmed him going through the whole cancer process and filmed him going in for the surgery and he made that part of his video. So while he was like in the wheelchair, in the gown, about to go in for his prostate cancer surgery, he was filming his next Survivor audition tape. I'm only doing this so I can get on Survivor. I don't care about the cancer. <laughs> yeah, oh, pretty much. Man. He was like, oh, like he 
found out he had cancer, and he's like, oh, his first thought was like, maybe that'll help me get on Survivor next season. But yeah, he unfortunately yeah, should have never got his chance to be on Survivor either. But who knows? They're 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 still doing it. Maybe uh, if I do ever end up getting some sort of clout in the industry, I could be like, hey, motherfuckers, put my fucking step out in an island. <laughs> yeah, Survivor, the golden era. Yeah, or the the, go- the golden era, the golden Survivor. What's the uh, they had, they did one with uh, the Bachelor, right? Yeah. Uh, what was that? The was Golden, the Golden Bachelor, Ad- wasn't it? Oh, it was the Golden Bachelor. Yeah, Carl got roped into watching that with one of her friends, and she was telling me that the guy was all gentlemanly, and some of the women were just like old skanks being like, Ah, oh, yeah, you want to see my pussy? And he's like, I do not find that attractive at all. I'm an esteemed gentleman. So he wasn't into like the usual, I mean, just from what I've gathered of hearing people talk about it, The Bachelor's. A lot of times people are just throwing themselves into the bone zone to try and up their chances of winning. And this guy was not into that. And then I guess they got fucking divorced already. So yeah. It's shocking to me that these marriages that start under these circumstances don't survive very long. It's crazy. Makes me feel like love is dead. It, yeah, you know. Like you would have thought that Flavor Flav and Brigitte Nielsen were destined for the rest of their lives together. Yeah. And what about if you can't, if you can't find love in a reality TV show, I don't know where you can find love nowadays. Yeah. What about Brett Michael and all those skeezers? Nothing. Yeah. I mean, he had like four or five chances and it just nothing worked out for the poor guy. Nope. Can't catch a break. Maybe it's because none of them found out he was bald until they, after they were married. Yeah, when they go to the- wait, was that was that really was that like a wig? Uh, I, I'm convinced it is because of how uh, he always has that bandana on that he's covering. That's always been a the rumor. very receded hairline. Yeah. What? That's always been the rumor that that's how he hides his baldness. But hey, he's doing better than Vince Neil. Uh, all right. Well, I think that that about does her fellers, right? I mean, I've spoken everything. I've done everything I need to do in this. Pop my karaoke cherry. That was nice. Yeah. That was tremendous, Jeff. Yeah, you have the voice of Unwritten, Natasha Benfields. (laughs) Check it out. I have a feeling the internet is going to be remixing that. I mean, you need to figure out a way to get it onto the soundtrack for John Cooper, Jeff's version. As I was doing, I was kind of like, this isn't bad. I don't think I'm doing terribly. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm, I'm making my mixtape for American Idol next season. And then I kind of then I kind of found the beat and harmonized a little bit. And I was like, all right. <laughs> well, everybody, if you don't want the fun to stop here, there's an easy way to fix that. Go to patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. Sign up and you are going to get the bonus show that we are about to record right now and the 320 plus bonus podcasts we've recorded in the past six, seven years or whatever amount it's been. And hey, you get to support your homies. We do the show for free. We've been doing the show for free for over 13 years. It's a labor of love at this point. So if you'd like to see your friends get a little bit of a win, sign up. Patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. Yeah, for records. And at MSPH Podcast, and also at John Cooper Movie, if you wouldn't mind. And hey, speaking of movies, patreon.com slash movie night with Kevin. That is still chugging along. Uh, this past week, God, I've, I've been trying to bank them for next week when my family is here. Uh, yeah, last week was Lethal Weapon. This coming... Friday, the month of May, is going to be creature feature movies. So, this coming Friday, 1988's The Blob, one of my all-time favorite horror movies. It fucking rules. Did a fun episode on that. So, you're going to make May spooky season. It's halfway to Halloween, shuddy boy. Got to do some creature features. 
And then Spook- uh, halfway the, to spooky season, the episode that I'm recording to bank and post next week when everybody's in town, that will be get ready. Shuddy boy, the monster squad. Such a classic fucking movie. Is that why when I was just looking at letterbox D that, uh, there's been recent activity on Wolfman's got Nords. Yes. I bought Was that you? They put out a 4K collector's edition of Monster Squad and the bonus disc, one of the bonus discs is the full Wolfman's Got Nards documentary. So I watched that for the first time which was it was pretty cool. It you know, it was, it's really good. It it's made by the the main kid, that actor. He wrote and directed it and put the whole thing together and man, when they got to the stuff where Horace when they talked about him dying, Oh, fucking waterworks. That was brutal. But anyway, yeah, check it out. Patreon.com slash Movie Night with Kevin. And if you want to see these shows, like if you want to watch Jeff sing Unwritten by Natalie Imbruglia Field. Yeah, that one. YouTube.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. Check it out. As well as Outkick Bets with Jeff Clark. Yeah, doing uh, the NBA playoffs really up until the middle of June. I'll sprinkle a couple of golf gambling podcasts in there. I am red hot in the NBA after getting just fucking peck or smack all of most of the NBA regular season. But I'm on a real fucking heater. So follow me now while I'm winning, um, especially if you were tailing my losing bets earlier. Um, but yeah, that's all I got going right now on the Outkick Bets podcast front. There you go. Check it out, friends. And there you go. Thank you guys for listening. But until next time, something. <laughs>